Imagine being someone that thought that having fans in the arena was going to make WWE Monday Night Raw better. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Y'all know better than that. You absolutely do, don't you? Yeah, you do. And you got a reminder of that last night. You're thinking, okay, maybe they're going to throw a lot at Raw. They know the ratings have sucked. They know that the vibe around the show and the product is not good. And you've got fans there like you're trying to create a great experience. And then you see what they actually did. And it's like, what the deuce? And there's lots that you can break down about that show. Lots you can criticize about that show. But two things I want to talk about here on this video are about the return of Keith Lee after being gone for almost half a year. And the Monday Night Raw debut of NXT champion Karrion Cross, and how this was gross imbecility and typical WWE stupidity of the absolute highest order. And if you agree with me right then and there, just that statement alone, you should probably follow me on Twitter if you don't already, and smash that subscribe button so that way you can get updates when I do more videos criticizing the stupidity of WWE. So... Let's talk about him individually. Look at the Keith Lee return. He's been gone for almost half a year. You've got Bobby Lashley issuing the open challenge. You know, if you're going to come back, come back in a big way. Nothing fundamentally wrong with sending Keith Lee at Bobby Lashley. And I will also say that one of the most tired and played out things that professional wrestling almost always does is when they have somebody debuting or returning after a long layoff, they always want to have them win. And that's just not realistic. That's just not believable or viable to think that that should be the way it plays out every time. It's played out as a tired trope, and I'm tired of seeing it. So fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with a Keith Lee coming back, going up against your freaking dominant WWE champion, and Bobby Lashley, and losing. You actually look more idiotic, in my opinion, in terms of how you would treat Bobby Lashley protecting your champion, or failing to protect your champion in this case, and how you would be presenting Keith Lee, especially if you're not going to go there with him at this point or anytime soon with him being the champion. Why in the hell would you take a guy that's been out for basically half a fucking year and bring him right back, and you just saw Bobby Lashley destroy a former world champion of Kofi Kingston the night before Money in the Back? Why the hell would you have Keith Lee win cleaner and in any type of dominant fashion against your freaking WWE champion? You don't do that. You just don't do that. Anybody with any logical, rational, sensible thinking wrestling brain would not do so. Even a sports entertainment brain, if you want to go there. So my issue is not that. My issue is, why go there? Why did you feel the need to bring back Keith Lee in this big way, only to have him lose? To me, sometimes it's about perspective. At the same time, it's about... You know, who matters and who doesn't. Obviously, you believe that Keith Lee matters because you presented him in that way because you had him return against the freaking champion of the damn brand. So that means you see something in him. That means you feel something for him. That means you believe that he can be something. He's somebody you want to invest in now and the future. So why in the blue is the blue fox? Wouldn't you do a better job of protecting that now and long-term investment? Ding dong, dumb dicks. That is stupid to sit there and send him out when he's supposed to be a big deal and you have him lose his first match back. Believable as it may be, it's still stupid. If you were going to bring a guy like him back, you probably do want to have him win his return. You have him do that against some type of jobber or some type of undercard guy or even some type of mid-card guy. Fucking have Sheamus issue an open challenge and have Keith Lee come back and win the United States Championship in his first night back. Or you have him come out and he dominates Sheamus, but Sheamus gets disqualified, and bam, you're off. You've got a story for the U.S. title. It's like so easy, it almost fucking writes itself. Or, or, instead of doing what you did, which was unnecessary clear-cut decision by having Keith Lee job out to Bobby Lashley here, only then to have Goldberg come out and confront Bobby Lashley afterwards, imagine how much different it would be if you had Goldberg's music hit during Keith Lee's match against Bobby Lashley, 
He seizes upon it, takes advantage, rolls up the champion from behind. One, two, three, real quick, in, boom, Bob's your uncle. He's the fuck out of there. Now, Keith Lee has won his return. It absolutely does not hurt Bobby Lashley in any freaking way because he got distracted because he heard a Hall of Famer's music thinking that this guy's going to come up to him and say, you're next. Now you have set the tone. You've already started a story between Goldberg and Bobby Lashley for the WWE title at SummerSlam. And by the way, you've also created a great excuse for a return match in the future between Keith Lee and Bobby Lashley. What happened to the art of the fucking return match in professional wrestling? It's like it's so obvious. It's right freaking there. You could have had Bobby Lashley get disqualified. Take some liberties with Keith Lee. Make Keith Lee a little sympathetic and still leave some doubt there or, or lack of certainty. And he didn't do any of that. It was just, you went decisive to be dumb dicks and then did the other thing. You didn't have to do that. Who in the well? We know who the hell is making the decisions here and nobody in that company has the goddamn guts to tell the senile 75, 76 year old coach that he doesn't know what the hell he's doing anymore. So Keith Lee's return was so Stupid! You didn't have to go there, but once you went there, there were still other things you could have done to protect Bobby Lashley 100%, which is key and important. You're not doing a title change there. And you absolutely could have had Keith Lee be protected as well and come out of this better, create an excuse for a return match. Now there's no reason to see these two wrestle again. Bobby Lashley's already beaten him clean. What the fuck's the point now? And who does that? I don't even know if that was the worst thing of the night. Then you had the debut of Karrion Cross on Monday Night Raw. And regardless of what anybody wants to think, the reality is, is NXT is the developmental brand for Raw and SmackDown. It is the developmental brand of WWE. It just is. So what you should be doing, and I talked about this in a video a couple of weeks ago, talk about Karrion Cross and his packaging, especially bringing him up to the main roster, is if Scarlett was with him in NXT, she should freaking be with him when he makes a main roster debut. The whole purpose of the developmental is to get them ready and prepare them for the next level. And if you've been doing this as part of the package of the presentation of Karrion Cross the entire time, why in the blue is the blue fox? Wouldn't you bring her along with? And don't say, well, you can bring her in later. No, 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 no. You take the entire package and you bring it from day one. It is a lift and shift. This isn't that damn hard. But that wasn't even the worst part, as stupid and idiotic as that is. Again, as I mentioned, not everybody win needs to win their debut match or their return match. I absolutely agree with that. However, you also have those that you should not be jobbing out on their first night on the job. Karrion Cross is one of those guys that you want to get over big. He is one of those guys that you want to try and put in a main event type of spot. Because when you see a Karrion Cross, if you have any brains within WWE, whether it works out or pans out this way or not, is something different potentially. But when you look at him, you should be absolutely envisioning, this is a guy that's going to work with Drew in the future. This is a guy that's going to work with Bobby Lashley in the future. This is a guy that's going to work with our Big E in the future. This is a guy that's going to work with Roman Reigns in the future. Like you should be projecting out that and getting him ready for that. And getting him ready just as importantly, not from a talent standpoint, what he's going to do, but from a fans and presentation standpoint, getting fans to say that he's ready for that spot, that we want to see him there. And you bring him out and you job him out to Jeff fucking Hardy, who's been jobbing out his damn self? What the hell is wrong with you? And you can make some pathetic excuse about, oh, he lost, but that's going to be the story. It doesn't need to be the story. That's the damn point. You jobbed out your NXT champion, developmental champion or not, he's still a champion for a national television company or national television wrestling brand, sports entertainment brand, whatever the hell you want to call it. He is the top guy in NXT. You don't bring up the top guy in NXT to job out on his debut night, even if it is against a legend and Hall of Famer like Jeff fucking Hardy. It's not like this is peak of his powers, Jeff Hardy. It's kind of in run-of-the-mill Jeff Hardy mode now. He's jobbing out to people. Why the hell would you do that? If anything, why would you even need to have him have a decisive win or loss? Why not just have him obliterate and destroy Jeff Hardy? 
There, you've got an excuse for a return match. Again, the lost start of the return match of professional wrestling. There, you've got a story that people can get behind. Here's this new figure, this younger guy that's coming in and attacking one of the old lions and he wants to establish his spot. What the fuck is wrong with that? Instead, you basically just said with that one match that NXT is a vastly inferior brand, which just on the surface seems fundamentally stupid. Even if it's true, it's still fundamentally stupid. You don't want to do that yourself unless you're a dumbass. When it comes to character development, storytelling, protecting key commodities, Vince is absolutely a dumbass nowadays. Because only a dumbass would do something like that. You devalued your third brand. You devalued your third big championship. You devalued that champion of that brand. You diminished, devalued a potentially future valuable commodity for Raw, SmackDown, wherever he would go in the long term. Why the hell would you do that? Instead of bringing him out of the gate strong and saying, we're going to make an impact with him. We're going to make a difference with him. We're going to make him look like a big deal because we want to be able to put him in a spot someday to say he's going to wrestle a Drew. He's going to wrestle a Lashley. He's going to wrestle a Biggie. He's going to be wrestling a Roman. You see how I'm thinking bigger picture, which is exactly what the fuck a CEO is supposed to do. Instead, Vince does the exact ass opposite. He didn't have any clue what the hell he's doing. I don't know what was worse, and you guys can debate it out in the comments. Was Keith Lee's return dumber? Or was Karrion Cross's Raw debut stupider? And when I look at the stupid, there's a lot of stupid here with Keith Lee. But at least it came against the WWE Champion. And one that you are, at least at the moment, trying to present in a somewhat strong, dominant fashion. That I can forgive, stupid as it may be. But for Karrion Cross, you really don't give a shit about Jeff Hardy right now. You should be leveraging Jeff Hardy. If you're not going to leverage Jeff Hardy to the maximum of his potential and the maximum of what he could do for you, then you should absolutely be leveraging him in this role to help get a guy like Karrion Cross over. The fact old Karrion Cross lost and now he's pissed. That, that's not a fucking story. That's not the type of story you should be telling. If Jeff Hardy was the bigger guy and a heel and Karrion Cross was the smaller guy and the baby face, you could potentially make a story out of that. When Karrion Cross is supposed to be the heel and the bigger guy, the whole dynamics are all fucked up here. But not nearly as fucked up as taking your NXT champion, having him debut on Raw, and lose, bam, boom, one, two, three, clean in the middle of the ring. Of all the stupid ass things, like even for WWE, that ranks right up there. What an idiotic decision. Both of them were. So stupid.